In 2023, the support for the one password classic extension was put on hold, so Agile Bits is not supporting it anymore. And people that um, are having one password seven can uh, not download this um, extension for the browser from the Chrome App Store anymore. And um, people were asked to upgrade to one password eight or the cloud solution. But I will show you how you can still make use of the one password classic extension for one password seven even today. And um, for this, we will need to download it, not from the official Chrome App Store, but from the one password website. There is a product history here and there is the classic browser extension available in version 4.75. Yeah, this is important. Um, keep um, that in mind. But the downloads here on that page are unfortunately broken. So if I click here download for Chrome, then I will run into this error here because this uh, CloudFront URL is not reachable and I cannot download this CRX file for Chrome. Fortunately, there is Reddit and in here, um, a user noted that stable releases are still available from the CDN from AGIBits. So this year is still an official URL from AGIBits from 1Password. It's not any third party. It's not like um, a third party GitHub repository where someone copied in all the code. No, it's like um, official official. So while this link here lasts, please <laughs> make sure to click it. But then you will run into another error because you will be told that the package here is invalid, CRX header invalid here on the top left, because the CRX file is an extension file for Chrome. And um, this CRX file is um, of version two, manifest version two. And uh, the current Chrome versions, they don't support this version two uh, any longer, or well, they support it, you will see in a bit but they want version three extensions. And um, since this uh, is an unsupported extension by AJBits, not maintained anymore, the version two will by default um, not be uh, installed, but uh, I will show you how you can still get through this. So do a right click on the link here and um, say save link as, then you will get this nice uh, download box and you can say, okay, I want to save this uh, version 4.7.5. Um, as a CRX file here on my PC. Now we have the CRX file here on our hard disk. And the CRX file is a compressed package containing necessary uh, metadata for Google Chrome to know what extension that is. And um, it must be installed in the Google Chrome. It's um, actually not so easy to install. Let um, us walk through that. So we can go to uh, Chrome, uh, then um, we go to extensions, and in here we can activate the developer mode on the top right, and then we can load an unpacked extension. Unpacked extension, well, we don't have any because our extension is still in a package because the CRX file here needs now to be unpacked. Ooh, okay, how do we do that? Well, luckily there are some websites for that. So for example, there is this uh, CRX viewer website where we can uh, choose a file and I will just like go through my attempt directory in here and then I can uh, use this one and then I will see what's inside and you will see there's a manifest JSON where we also see that it's version two and this um, is um, deprecated. Yeah, so Google wants to get rid of version two. They want to have version three. Anyway, um, this is what uh, is inside the package. Yeah, there's a manifest file, then there's some CSS, JS, that's basically the code of that um, one uh, password extension. And we can then download this one here as a zip archive. And in that zip archive, we can click on um, extract all. And then we will have the extracted package. This pass here, this pass we can copy, then we go back to extensions, we say load unpacked, we put the path in here, select the folder, and then there is our extension. There 
is still um, this notification here that there are some errors. Yeah, because a manifest version 2 is deprecated, so port will be removed. And that's the problem that I've already mentioned. But we can, <laughs> we can trick Google Chrome because Google Chrome um, is not just installed for private and personal PCs, but also companies are running it. Yeah, and um, for companies, um, there is uh, a manifest version 2 availability registration entry that you can put in your computer, in your in, uh, environment. And that will still allow you to run version 2 manifest files. Yeah, that's um, um, here like a help page from the Chrome Enterprise version. And uh, it tells you what to do, um, depending on whether if you're on Mac or on Windows. Yeah, there are different steps to follow. But it basically works like this. You need uh, a registry entry, this one here. And this registry entry, uh, or like in, in this location, you need to put this registry entry, this extension manifest v2 availability, and you need to give it a value. If you give it the value zero, then it's the default behavior from Chrome. And if you give it the value of two, then version two manifest will always be enabled, no matter the default behavior, because default behavior uh, is deprecated, but in the future will be like disabled. So um, you can set it to two, then it's always enabled. Yeah, so just make sure to set this um, registry entry to two if you want to uh, use version two manifests. I will show you how to do that because it's a bit tricky. On Windows, you need the PowerShell and um, open this here as administrator. And then you need to put in a funky, funky comment. You need to say, okay, I want to have a new entry in this pass, yeah, that's the pass here that I um, took from this um, website here. And then in this pass, I want to create this extension manifest version two availability uh, key. I want to set it to the value two uh, in the um, data type of the word. And if you do this, then uh, it is being like entered. You can then check it in your Windows registry. And you can also see that uh, in the Chrome policies. So if you go to policy here uh, and you do like reload policies, then you will see that there's now extension manifest version two availability. And that activates old extensions. So then um, this year will be working. Um, let me just check if it does extensions, one password. Yep, here it is. And make sure to not update it <laughs> because Agile Bits wants to um, yeah, make it non-functional because they say, ah, oh, it's security risk, old extension, no maintenance. Okay, I get it. But uh, if you know what you're doing, leave it like this. Don't update it as long as it's working for you and secure. Okay, I want to give you a few more things that can help you out in the future because Agile Bits may disable these links here because they may say, oh, the versions are too old, they are not maintained. We want you to buy the latest and greatest. We want you to get a subscription from us and they may remove these links. When this happens, then um, you need to have other sources where you can download one password classic extension. And um, one way is to use, for example, a browser in the Chrome profile where you have the official extension still installed. For example, in this Chrome instance here, I have the one password extension from the Chrome Web Store. Yeah, back in the days, some years ago, I installed it and it's still like here up and running in my Chrome. Yeah, even though that um, extension here is not uh, distributed through the web store any longer, it's still available in here. And I can now redistribute it myself. For example, there is this pack extension button here. And with this button, I can create a CRX file from installed extensions. Let me show you how to do this. I click here and then I need to navigate to the extension. How do I do that? Well, quite easy. You open up your Explorer, then you go to local app data 
And in here in local app data, there will be Google, 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 Google. Let's Google, Google, <laughs> Google. And in Google, there is Chrome and in Chrome, there's user data. In user data, there's default. And in here are the extensions, extensions. And then the extensions are listed by their IDs from the Chrome Web Store. The ID we get from, from here. This here is the ID. So I need to copy that. Um, I need to go back. Ah, now I don't have to pass anymore, but we will just navigate there again. Yeah, if we try things two or three times, uh, we remember them much better. So Google, Chrome, user data, default, uh, extensions, and then this um, clunky ID here in the back. And then we have this uh, 4.7.5 version of 1Password classic extension. We can then copy the pass from here. We go back to pack extension. We say, okay, my extension is in here. And then we pack it. And then we get our CIX file. Yeah, so I can then go back to that directory and um, have the CIX file and then do it as I've shown you before, yeah, like unpacking it and then loading an unpacked um, extension on another Chrome instance where I want to install it. There may also be a time where this website here won't be available anymore. So this website we used to unpack CIX files and in case this website is not available because it moved somewhere else, who knows? In this scenario, you can make use of some CLI tools for example, there's this unzip CRX CLI package that you can install when you are running, for example, Node.js on your system. Just copy then this line here, go to your terminal and then execute it. This will then install this unzip uh, CRX CLI package. And when you then have here your, your file, the one password CRX uh, extension, then you can run unzip CRX CLI and let's see the, the readme. Um, we need to give it then the extension and an output directory. Output directory is optional, so we can just give it here the name of the extension. And um, in our case, this year was uh, one password 47590 CRX. So we'll just pass it in here. Then it becomes unzipped and we have then here again, the folder that we can link in Chrome. I'm now on my Mac and there's a comment from the one password community team that it's not possible to download and use the one password classic browser extension with any Chromium browser because of the manifest version two and version three problem. Well, I'm here in Chrome version 134, the latest and greatest. And if I click on here, you will see that I have the one password browser extension and it's working. But to be fair, um, Blake here is um, completely right. There is this version uh, two problem. And I also like just um, bypassed it by setting the manifest v2 availability to the value of two. Yeah, this can be done here in the terminal. On Mac OS, you have to um, use a different command. Uh, you have to write defaults, write, and then com Google Chrome space extension manifest v2 availability space, and then you have to give it an integer of the value two, and that will then um, here enable this manifest version two. You can see that then in the policies, yeah, it's version two now. If I, for example, set it to the default, which is value zero, and I reload it, you will see zero. And if you want to still keep going with old extensions, set it to value two. In order to make the one password classic extension work with one password seven on Mac, you need to have the desktop app. So please install the one password seven desktop app for Mac first before installing the plugin. But um, be aware that um, there are several versions. Um, luckily, Agile Bits, and I'm very, very happy for that, thank you, Agile Bits, provides 
old downloads here. So they provide all versions here that have been released for 1Password 7. There are 7, 9, 11, 9, 10, and 9, 9. You can see here that 7.10 introduces deprecation warnings. And also like 7.11, 7.9.11 here has deprecation warnings. And then they want to like um, announce upgrades to 1Password 8. So this is like what has been introduced in uh, 9.11 and 9.10. And I don't like that. I don't want to have these deprecation warnings. <laughs> so I'm sticking to 7.9.9. Yeah, you can see that here in my 1Password. If I go here and say about 1Password, it's version 7.9.9. And um, I also here in the settings made sure that um, updates are disabled. I'm not checking for updates because otherwise I will get the deprecation warnings. That being said, if you are in the App Store, then you will find one password version 7 also from the App Store. But you will get the 7911 version with the deprecation warnings. And this is what I try to avoid. You see like a lot of people are complaining. The rating is quite bad. So try to go to this website here and download 7.9.9, deactivate the updates, and then that should be working much better. If you have purchased 1Password 7 in the past on iOS, you can reinstall it by going to the App Store, then on your account, then in Apps, and in Not on this iPad, you will find all apps that you ever bought or installed. And if you look for one password, you will see two in my case, one from 2024 and one from, 20, uh, from 2013, 2013. The 2013 one is the version 7.10.2. Last update uh, was two years ago, so it's uh, also not maintained anymore, but uh, you can find it in your history, in your app history, if you have purchased that in the past. And for me, that's still working in 2025. Last but not least, I want to look at the Windows version of 1Password. So these uh, older Windows uh, versions can be downloaded from this product history page. And there is uh, version 79836, so patch level 836. Um, this is uh, from 2024 and um, works also still in 2025. I, for myself, made sure that uh, my 1Password version is also like um, this one, the patch level 836. And in the settings, I made sure that the update is um, turned off. So no automatic updates because I don't want to upgrade to 1Password 8 yet. Just for your own safety, make sure you download the older versions if you want to use them because there's no guarantee that they stay any longer on the agile bits website because it's not maintained and um, again like i'm uh, not complaining about one password eight or saying that you shouldn't update um, you should probably update because it's the most secure version that they have but um, in my case like i bought a licensee for the one password seven so i still want to continue um, to use it a bit and uh, I'm very thankful for Agile Bits to build such quality product that um, is still like working in 2025.